Hello, welcome to this presentation of International Plumbing Code. My name is Thomas, and in this presentation we are going to finish Chapter 9. We're going to look at 918 Air Admittance Valves. Let's have a look. As mentioned, Section 918 discusses air admittance valves, also known as auto vents, also known as Studer vents. Studer was one of the early manufacturers of these types of venting devices, but altogether we're looking at a device that can allow air into the venting system without allowing sewer gas to come out. Now in 918.1, it says that these devices shall comply and conform to certain standards. Air admittance valves have become more and more common over time, especially when manufacturers started producing these recessed wall kits. 918.2 states that when we're installing these, we have to make sure that we're following the manufacturer's instructions and that these come in after the drainage, waste, and vent testing. So we rough in all of our pipes, we put the test on, we have our inspection, and then after that we would install the air admittance valve. Now that may be on the finish and most of the time it is, but these valves should not be installed before we do our pressure test. 918.3 talks about where we can install an air admittance valve and you'll find that you can install it to any of the methods of venting that we have discussed. Starting with the individual vent, this one's obvious, you can just put an auto vent under or near a sink. Let me point out as we go through these diagrams of where you can install an air admittance valve, please notice that every single diagram is going to show an illustration of the building drain and a vent through the roof. You will always need at least one vent from the building drain to the open air somewhere, even if you're using air admittance valves in any variety of venting methods. Here we have an air admittance valve being used to wet vent a bathroom group. An air admittance valve can also be used in a common vent scenario like this. You can use an air admittance valve in a circuit, as we see here. Air admittance valves can also be used for vents that have been branched together. You can see here we have sinks, toilets, showers, the whole bathroom group being piped together with the auto vent serving all of those. Now here's an example of what you cannot do. You cannot connect different vents from different floor levels together and use an auto vent for all of it. The reason why is that there is a difference in pressure from one branch interval to the next. This is an interesting illustration of the way that air pressure moves within a venting system. When you get into a really high stack with multiple branch intervals, say above five and you have a vent stack, here are the sorts of pressures that we begin to see. Higher up, we're going to see negative pressures inside of that stack. Lower down, we see positive air pressures within that stack. And because there are generally positive vent pressures, meaning it's trying to push that sewer gas out into the space at the lower branch intervals, air admittance valves can only be used on a tall building in the upper sections where there is less of that positive pressure trying to push the gases out. 918.4 talks about the location of those air admittance valves in relation to the fixtures and when it comes off of a branch for a P-trap, that air admittance valve has to be at least four inches above that trap arm. Now usually that's quite manageable within a cabinet. Most of the time you're going to want to get that air admittance valve up as high as you can, four inches a minimum, but let's get it up high as we can underneath the cabinet. 918.5 talks about access and ventilation. Of course all of these would have to be accessible later and they have to be installed in a location where air can easily flow into the system as needed. 918.6 talks about the size of the air admittance valve. These are rated for a different numbers of drainage fixture units. So wherever you install that, you would want to make sure that you've installed one that can handle the number of drainage fixture units for the fixtures that will be vented by that air admittance valve. Some air admittance valves may only be able to handle six drainage fixture units. Some can handle as many as 20 or more. The valve will say right on the packaging how much drainage fixture units it can handle. As I mentioned earlier, 918.7 talks about the requirement for a vent from the building drain all the way to open air, regardless of how or where you use air admittance valves throughout the building. 918.8 talks about prohibited installations. There are some situations where these should not be installed, including non-neutralized special waste systems, 
This would be systems that would contain things that would be corrosive to the air admittance valve and then it would fail. These are also not allowed for vents on sumps. We have to remember again that a sewage ejector sump is going to be pumping out fluids at a very fast rate and it's going to need some air to replace that. Now these air admittance valves are not rated for the volume of air that needs to go into that system in order to replace the fluid that's pumped out of the sump. So unless there's one that's engineered and especially designed for that purpose, you should not be using air admittance valves for the vent on a sewage ejector or a sump. Also, air admittance valves should not be used outside, say on a roof near an air intake, just to try and prevent sewer gases from coming in to the building if we're too close to the air intake with the vent terminal. These are not made for outdoor installations and those scenarios. As we look at fundamentally how do these air admittance valves work, well the ones that are properly designed and approved by the code standards are going to use a mechanism inside that will allow the air in as that diaphragm flexes with a negative pressure but when positive pressure comes it closes and seals up so that sewer gas cannot come out. Now this is a prohibited device. These are used all the time in manufactured homes. I've seen them. They do functionally the same thing, allowing air in when needed, but hopefully not letting sewer gas out. But these are very faulty. Not only that, they're noisy. So while you can purchase them at local suppliers or hardware stores, they are not approved and you want to make sure to install those air admittance valves that are approved by code. Section 919 of the code gives information about engineered vent systems and basically says that anything engineered outside of this would have to comply with these sections. Whatever fancy math you use, there is also a table that you would have to meet certain minimum requirements, but if you're going to have it designed or engineered outside of the code, or if we look at section 920 where it talks about computerized vent design, there may be other venting possibilities, but it would have to be approved and it would have to meet peak load calculations as that is designed. With that, we have completed our discussion of International Plumbing Code Chapter 9 on vents. Once again, we covered some of the basics, but even for all the time we've spent discussing this, there's more in there that I would recommend you read go through make sure you understand what this code is saying but hopefully what we've talked about helps you with that understanding now once again I sincerely believe that this chapter separates the plumbers who know what they're doing from those who don't so for you it's vital that you make sure you understand how venting works what methods you can apply so that you can be as useful and successful as you possibly can good luck venting